that this is what happened, that, that it was shot down by a Russian missile battery that had been given or, or loaned to the rebels, then it's not really clear what happens. I suppose sanctions could be further tightened. There could be some other sort of punishment. But I have to tell you, in my own analysis, as tragic and as awful as this is, I'm not really sure that it changes the strategic calculation of Mr. Putin or of the rebels that he backs in eastern Ukraine. I think it's going to take a lot more international pressure to change that calculation. It won't be changed just because everyone's so upset about the 298 people who were needlessly killed. Faintly said, Al, indeed, we'll have to wait until the investigations are conducted. And uh, from the looks of it, it might take a while before we hear any more developments on the uh, crash sites. Thanks a lot, Al, uh, for speaking Thank with you. us on The World Today. Al Person, the VOA correspondent in Ukraine, he spoke to us from the capital, Kiev. We'll take a short break now. We'll be right back. Every day you invite us to your home. Now we invite you to our homepage. Join Channels TV on social media. Hang out with us on Google Plus forward slash Channels Television. Follow us on Twitter.com forward slash Channels TV underscore NG. Friend us on Facebook.com forward slash Channels Forum. And don't forget to like our page. That's not all. Subscribe to our YouTube channels, youtube.com forward slash channels web to get posts and video updates and news and events in Nigeria and around the world. Channelstv.com, the news at your fingertips. Welcome back to the world today. Let's check in now on stories here in Africa. It was nothing short of a messy and violent weekend at the Kenyan city of Mombasa as gunmen on a motorcycle killed at least four people and injured several others. And the gunmen were set to have fired indiscriminately at passers-by during the mayhem. And sadly, this is just another of the series of violent attacks which have recurred in the port city. The violence itself has largely been attributed to Somali al-Shabaab militants, but many say local political rifts are to blame. Witnesses did report, though, that the gunmen rampaged through the streets of Kenya's second largest city. More than 60 people were killed in two days of violence there in June, and President Uhuru Kenyatta blamed the incident then on political networks, not al-Shabaab. Most of the dead were ethnic Kikuyus, like the president and critics said Mr. Kenyatta was trying to put the blame on his rival, Raila Odinga, who is an ethnic Luo, whom he defeated in last year's presidential election. The United Nations has accused South Sudanese rebels of violating a ceasefire by launching an offensive to recapture its former headquarters. The attack on Nasir town was the most serious resumption of hostilities since May. The rebels claimed they had seized the town in an act of self-defense, but the government denied the town had fallen. Fighting between government and rebel forces broke out in December, leaving more than a million people homeless. President Salva Kiir and rebel leader Riyak Mashar met in May and recommitted themselves to a ceasefire negotiated in January by regional leaders. A rebel spokesperson said they launched an offensive because of several attempts by government forces to arrest their commander. But the South Sudanese army spokesperson, Philip Aguer, denied Nasser had fallen knowing cl following clashes between the two sides. Conflict erupted in December after Mr. Kier accused Mr. Mashar, his SAC deputy, of plotting a coup. Now, have you ever thought you were invincible to have your accounts hacked? You need to think again, as even the Kenyan Defense Forces did not stand a chance when their Twitter accounts were hacked by activists protesting about corruption. The hack posts were signed as being from activist group Anonymous, which is a loosely knit group that's been involved in a number of high profile online protests and attacks in recent years. Kenya military spokesperson Major Emmanuel Chucher often uses Twitter to give updates of the war against Somali's Al Shabaab militant group. The hackers criticized the government of President Uhuru Kenyatta, saying that it only protected the interests of the elite and was not doing enough to tackle poachers and drug traffickers. Now, this is not the first as regards hacking being done by a group with the name Anonymous. Uh, just last year, a group called Anonymous Africa 
hacked into the account of Zimbabwe's defense ministry and targeted the website of South Africa's governing African National Congress. The widow of a global, late global icon Nelson Mandela has spoken out on the need to add value to a quest for more cohesion in Africa as the continent develops. As she said this at a lecture in Johannesburg on the theme for Africa to live, the nation must die. Ms. Grasser Machel was of the view that essential leadership was required to steer the people of the continent beyond the thinking and views of its component parts to a broader one of oneness without losing the elements of its diversity. Our correspondent in South Africa, Betsy Debia, reports. It was one of Ms. Gressa Michelle's first public outings since her official mourning period ended a few weeks back. In spite of this many achievements. So I want to say thank you for, for the love and support Addressing the theme of the lecture, for Africa to live, the nation must die. The fluidity of African identity in a changing continent. The speaker was of the view that at the base of this must be a value proposition. I do not believe that the tribe must die for the nation to live. I believe that ethnic diversity, racial diversity and class diversity must be offered a clear value proposition that makes them feel that they benefit from being part of a nation state. Giving examples such as Tanzania and the U.S. as entities with a semblance of cohesion despite huge diversity, she praised the efforts of older generation pan-Africanists like Kwame Nkrumah of Ghana and more recent ones like Nigeria's Olushe Gumbasanjo and South Africa's Thabo Mbeki through the AU NEPAD and the Africa Peer Review Mechanism, but insists the process must go deeper, fueled by an emotional element of a sense of belonging. Which means... Without changing the borders which were imposed on us by Berlin, but we have to expand our sense of identity to the roots of who we were and who we want to be. Taking questions from the audience, she addressed various African issues. I think the, 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 the sense of uh, being nationalistic and the narrow sense of sovereignty is overriding the need for us to work together, to take pride on success of others, and then to move our regions together. And on women, she says, the place, role, and even mindset of women in Africa need to be improved for a positive knock-on effect on the continent's development drive. Betty Dibia, Channels Television News. And that's the world today. Thanks for watching. I am Amarachi Ubani. Stay tuned in just a few minutes for sports news.